What's going on, guys? Zuko back with another War Within video. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. I want to introduce you to a hybrid elemental build that I've kind of been messing around with cooking on the beta here. Um, there were some recent changes that came through for Elemental Shaman. I don't think it was intended to hit Elemental Shaman, but it did. And I'm going to talk about those really quickly. I'm going to talk about why I think this hybrid build might be the best version of, like, a lightning build. There's, like, a hair in my eyeball. And then um, I'm going to show you some footage of it and me actually trying it in a dungeon. So, first and foremost, the changes that came through this, P this week on the beta for the War Within saw buffs to Farseer, which, again, is, like, more tailored towards the fire build. The game one's going by there. Tends, tends to go more towards the fire build, which we see right now on the live server with a lot of Lava Burst casts and um, Primordial Wave and managing your Flame Shocks and like all that kind of stuff. So there was buffs to Farseer. There was nerfs to Stormbringer, which I think primarily were targeted at Enhancement Shaman, but like Ellie Shaman, of course, shares that hero tree, so we kind of caught a stray bullet there. So I think the Farseer changes were intentionally aimed at Resto Shaman, but we kind of got a buff for Ellie. And then these Stormbringer changes were aimed at Enhancement Shaman, but we got a nerf for Ellie. So I don't really know why Blizzard does this. Like, I feel like if anybody was to take a look at the Stormbringer build right now on the beta, you would know right away that it's worse than the fire build for Ellie Shaman, like, by far. So, like, it should not get nerfed even further. It should be buffed. So hopefully they kind of revert some of these changes just for Ellie in the next patch. We're going to have to wait and see um about that but that's the main like thing that's happened here okay what does that mean well the biggest thing here is that your farseer your ancestors little dudes you spawn 25 percent more single target damage from them 50 percent more chain lightning aoe damage from them those are the two big takeaways here also ancestral swiftness is a 30 second cooldown not a 45 second cooldown huge the other big change that came through is that primordial wave is a 30 second cooldown not a 45 second cooldown so like all these things are amazing for the fire build for ellie shaman which means what happens to the lightning build where does that leave us with stormbringer well i, I just don't think that stormbringer is going to be competitive unless they make some radical changes they need to really buff the stormbringer maelstrom generation in particular it's kind of abysmal so I decided, okay, I want to play more of a lightning-based build. I want to have Storm Elemental. I want to have, you know, Flash of Lightning. I want to be doing things like Stormkeeper. I want my Lightning Rods. I want to be casting Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt. Can I do a Farseer build that incorporates Lightning stuff and kind of do a mixed hybrid of the two? And that's what I've come up with here. Another massive buff that just came through for the Farseer tree is Heed My Call. Went from Ancestors lasting two additional seconds to them now lasting four additional seconds which is insanely strong yes casting lava burst having a chance to get an ancestor is very very good but four additional seconds means that when you press ancestral swiftness and primordial wave now you get two ancestors for 10 seconds and because primordial wave and ancestral swiftness both got their cooldowns reduced i think that heed my call gets a lot more value okay so this is kind of the build that i've cooked up here here's what it does Number one, the most important talent on here that I didn't realize is Flash of Lightning. And it cools down your nature spells. Guess what counts as a nature spell? Yeah, Ancestral Swiftness. So casting Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt are going to reduce the cooldown of Ancestral Swiftness, which means instead of it being like a 30-second cooldown, it's more like a 20-second cooldown now or a 15-second cooldown. So you're getting Ancestors up much, much, much more often. And again, they're lasting for 10 seconds. So... All you're really doing here in this build, the reason that we're going farce here, we're not leaning really hard into the fire base build with like Ascendance and Deeply Rooted. All we're doing is getting Ancestor uptime as high as we can get it so that they can copy our, our AoE spells and cast Chain Lightning for us, okay? And on the dummies, it looks something like this. Earthquake damage is huge. Chain Lightning damage. Look at our Ancestor damage. 16.7, almost 17% of our damage is now coming from Ancestors, okay? And my uptime on Ancestors is really, really high. 
in this particular demonstration, it was 64% uptime. I've done a single target demo as well, and I had 67%, no, 65% uptime. It's almost the exact same on my ancestors on a single target fight. Okay, so what does this build do? It has high uptime on ancestors. It has massive cooldown reduction on your nature spells, which includes your Storm Elemental, your Storm Keeper, and of course, your Ancestral Swiftness, which is awesome. So those are rapidly cooling down, which means we can have more uptime on them. The more uptime we have on Storm Elemental, the more nature damage that we deal. We're dealing nature damage with our Chain Lightning, Lightning Bolt, Ellie Blast scales off nature damage. Flame Shock scales off nature damage because it's volcanic damage. Um, you get you get my point there. There's a lot of really cool scaling you can do here, and you're gonna cool down your Storm Ellie with Skybreakers and with Liquid Magma Totem. Okay, so it ends up looking something like this. I'll just show you really quickly here. You get really big CDR on your Storm Ellie. You get high uptime on Ancestors and. It has this really cool hybrid where you're doing fire damage and nature damage and you kind of have these burst windows. The last thing I'll mention is that the haste that you get from Primordial Wave means that your ancestors will cast more spells because anytime you cast a spell, they're casting a spell. So the more haste you can get, the better it is. When your Storm Elemental is up, he reduces the cast time of Lightning Bolt and Chain Lightning. So the faster you're casting those spells, the quicker your ancestors are casting them as well. So it's really, really important here. Let me just show you a really quick demonstration. We'll go Storm Ellie, and then we're going to go Liquid Magma Totem. We'll go Primordial Wave, and then we'll just off to the races. So we have two ancestors out right now. Okay, and they're copying our spells. Look at all the Chain Lightnings coming out right now. They're also going to cast a Chain Lightning whenever you press your uh, Earthquake. But look at how fast I'm casting my spells here. He's copying my spell because I have quick, quicker cast time because of my Storm Elemental being up. And look, Ancestral Swiftness is back. And my Ellie is almost back as well. Okay, we're going to go Flame Shock, Primordial Wave, another Haste window here. And then my Storm Elemental is back already. Boom, get him back up. And now my cast time is going to be increased. I'm going to cast my Chain Lightnings. I'm also reducing the cooldown of Storm Keeper. We'll do a big Storm Keeper here. And an Ancestral... Uh, get another spirit guy up. Sorry, uh, Ancestral Swiftness. It's just really cool. You're basically, like, having constant uptime on these um, ancestors because you have so much CDR from Flash of Lightning. And the Primordial Wave Haste window is really, really cool. Watch this. We're going to get another ancestor out, and then we're going to go boom. Now we have a big Haste window. Cast as many AoE spells as we can. Imagine, like, if you have Bloodlust on top... You'd be going so, so fast. There, Storm Ellie's up again. And now I'm going to have increased cast time. We're cooling down uh, Stormkeeper. Stormkeeper's back already. Stormkeeper's like a 30-second cooldown, right? It's like a 30-second cooldown. Your Ancestral Swiftness is like a 20-second cooldown. Your Primordial Wave is the same, is a 30-second cooldown. No, you can't change that. But I just really love how this kind of works together. And you get massive amounts of CDR. You get high uptime on your Ancestors. And I didn't really think about it before, but you don't need your ancestors. Like, you don't have to just press fire spells because you're doing a Farseer build. Look at my ancestors' damage. 23% of our damage was from ancestors. So, like, when you initially look at this tree, you think to yourself, I must play a fire-based build because it's forcing me to go into Primordial Wave. And, it's, and it just has big synergy with Lava Burst, right? So, like, obviously, I have to be pressing all my fire buttons and that's it. But no... What, how you should look at this tree is this. All you're doing is you have two buttons, Primordial Wave and Ancestral Swiftness. They're going to get you little copies of yourself. Those copies will just copy whatever you're doing. You can do whatever you want. You can press Chain Lightning. You can press Earthquake. You can do a Storm Build. It's a more generic buff than I initially thought it was at the beginning. I thought like it was really only good for fire, but it's not. It's just more of a generic buff that works very, very, very well for kind of whatever build you want to do. And I think that it's just really cool how it all fits together, fire and lightning, and especially with flash of lightning, giving you massive cooldown reduction on everything. Like you just watch the numbers on my storm elemental, watch the numbers on my ancestral swiftness. They go down whenever I'm casting lightning bolt or chain lightning. It just goes way, way down really quickly. 
the the next really great thing about this build is that it also cools down your utility spells. I didn't know this at first, but Flash of Lightning, when you press Lightning Bolt or Chain Lightning, it's going to take one second off of your wind shear. It's literally going to cool down your kick, which is amazing because your kick is already in a, the best in the game, in my opinion. So that's where it's got some extra utility there as well, which is really, really cool. Watch when I cast... Oh, no, it doesn't work with that. I have to cast out Lightning Bolt. We'll get there in a second. The final piece I want to touch on is that the pure storm build had really, really rough single target damage because, I don't know, the overloaded Lightning Bolts just weren't enough to get it over the line. So this build has incredibly good single target damage. It really helps to shore up that single target weakness that the pure storm build had. You can see I'm pumping this boss single target now. Now we're gonna switch to this guy. We are gonna do double damage here. So just be aware that the numbers are gonna be inflated. But watch my numbers just climb here once we get into this little window. And you just get so many Ellie blasts. And, and again, your ancestors are copying everything. Look at all the lava bursts that are flying out from them. And my damage goes up to 1.8 million on this boss. He literally dies in one phase because we're pumping so hard on the damage. Like, it's really crazy. <clears throat> so again, my ancestors on single target right there did 11% of my damage. So that's very, very, very good. Let's move on to some more AoE. This is just two target cleave. I'll show you some more AoE where I'm pressing chain lightning. Again, this is really where the cooldown reduction kicks in because you're pressing a lot of chain lightning. So we get our totem down. And we're going to go primordial away. We get a big haste window right now. And now I'm going into Stormkeeper. So it's big chain lightnings. Both my ancestors are up. And I'm doing big chain lightnings here. And they're doing chain lightnings. And we're doing a lot of damage. And we're cooling everything down. My elemental's coming back. My ancestral swiftness is coming back. You can see the numbers going down there. So the more I play around with this, the more I'm just like, man, this is so cool. The amount of uptime that you're getting on these spells. And it feels really fun to play. And it does a lot of damage. Like this thing actually pumps. I'll go to the end of the dungeon and we'll take a look at the um, overall. I don't know. Wait, did my ancestors actually do the most damage? Here we go. Yeah. They actually did the most damage overall for me in that entire dungeon, which is completely insane. But it's because we have so much uptime with them because we're cooling down ancestral swiftness. And you have Primordial Wave as a 30 second cooldown. We're getting so much uptime on our ancestors. They were our top damage guys and look at the damage spread ancestors lava burst earthquake ellie blast they're all like within one to two percent of each other which is really cool chain lightning frost sh or flame shock doing big damage liquid magma totem actually doing lots of damage and of course adding flame shocks and then lightning rod so over the overall in that dungeon we did 850k overall we were keeping up with you know the uh arms warrior and the arcane mage it was good like we didn't have an aug voker it's not inflated this is just how this build works, and it really is focused on those ancestors, how much damage they can deal, and because of the storm elemental uptime, um, you're getting a bunch of extra damage as well. And I just think because the ancestors are so buffed, Lava Burst doing 25% more, and Chain Lightning doing 25% more, and then the amount of uptime you can have on them, it just really, it's a really, really big buff. Ancient Fellowship also got buffed, um, which is really cool. I just love this build. And I think you guys should absolutely try it. I think that, seriously now, I think there's a very premier fire build for Ellie Shaman. I think there's a hybrid build right here uh, for Ellie Shaman as well. And I think there is a lightning build with Stormbringer, but it's currently, I think, just way worse. We're going to have to wait and see what Blizzard does. Maybe in the next patch notes, maybe they're going to revert some of the, the nerfs that essentially came through for Stormbringer. That This needs to get, like, nerfed, like rebuffed for ellie shaman but once that happens i think there's going to be three legitimate builds here you could try i mean this build was just awesome i loved playing it it felt smooth and it was really you know it was really enjoyable getting all the cooldown reduction so let me know what you guys think in those comments down below about ellie shaman and a potential hybrid build here i think it's cool to see the farseer as a more generic hero tree that isn't just for the fire build you can actually use it in multiple different ways because these ancestors will just copy whatever spell you're doing right so let me know what you think in the comments down below thank you so much again for watching i love you all i will see you in the next one